Hi everybody, welcome back. This is part seven. Today, we're gonna to be insulating and rendering the oven dome. Let me briefly explain the materials that I'm gonna be using and the whole process uh, that I'm gonna go through in this video. This is ceramic fiber blanket. I bought three rolls of this. It's one inch thick by 24 inches wide and the length is 25 feet. For my size oven, I needed three rolls, and I bought them on Amazon. I'll put the link in the description below. This is, as far as insulative properties, this is the best stuff you can put on your oven to uh, hold that heat in. Once this is installed, then I'm gonna be putting chicken wire over it. Now, the purpose of the chicken wire is so that way, when I am putting my rendering layer on, it'll have something to hold on to. Now what rendering is, is creating a hard shell around this insulation, uh, something that will be able to be waterproofed. I'm gonna be putting about an inch to an inch and a half of concrete mortar over this insulation. If I don't have that, that chicken wire on there, it won't have anything to grip onto as I'm packing it on. After I put that mortar on and it dries, I'm gonna put a decorative finish to it, either some kind of stone tile or stone veneer. I haven't figured it out yet, but we'll figure it out by the time this video is over. Make sure when you're working with this installation that you wear proper protective gear. You need to wear a good mask, uh, goggles, which I did forget to put on at first and then I put them on. Make sure you wear something with long sleeves, uh, long pants. The thicker the material, the better, because it does get in there and you can feel it. Um, just, just take all the safety precautions that you can. I'm putting three layers of this material down, and so after I finish the first layer, I'm gonna make sure to put the second layer in a way where the, the seams don't overlap. You don't want overlapping seams because then you're gonna have heat loss, so make sure you try to stagger them as best you can. Now, installing this chicken wire, uh, I'm gonna be screwing three and a half inch screws into my vermiculite concrete uh, insulative base, uh, which I did a video on earlier before I started building the dome. Uh, and it's gonna be able to be used as an anchor to hold uh, the, the, the wi some wire in place. That way I can kind of tie this, this, this chicken wire down. To get the concrete to, to adhere to the, the wire mesh, you're gonna have to play around with the consistency of it. So you're gonna have to just find the right ratio of water. That way uh, it'll, it'll hold. Now I found that a little bit more liquidy rather than drier worked because it was able to get through the mesh easily and it held. As I'm putting concrete on, on top of this mesh, uh, I realized that some parts, it was harder to get it to hold. So I'm gonna do the best I can, and then tomorrow I'll just do a second skim coat over it. Now I did the second skim coat here, uh, and it, it looks great. All the wire is covered. I would say on average, I probably have about an inch, maybe a little bit more of concrete over this, which is strong enough to be able to be the base for uh, the tile or the stone that we're gonna be using. Our dome is rendered and it's dry now. So that means we can do the, ne the next step, which is to put some kind of decorative finish on it. 
I'm going to be using these mats with a whole bunch of stones on it, and I believe it's uh, marble, these stones, and I bought it at my big box store, and it was very limited to my options, so this is the only thing I could find where I could get enough of it. Uh, and to apply them to my dome, I'm going to be using a thin set that is really specifically for natural stone. I'm going to start by using this quarter inch V-notched trowel, and I think this is going to be right for this tile. If it's not, we'll go to the quarter inch square notch trowel, but I think this is going to be good. Let's see how it works out. If you're working on a flat surface, these mats tie into each other very nicely. And the bottom row is going to be just fine. I can just keep going uh, from tile to tile without having to make any adjustments. But as you work your way up, this is a curved surface, so they're not going to tie in as nicely on the second row. So I am going to have to fill some gaps with uh, little pieces. I'm going to cut up a mat or just use some leftover scraps. I'm going to be using a sanded grout, and you should use a sanded grout if your joints are more than an eighth of an inch. Now when you apply this, you're going to be using your squeegee. Uh, if you've ever done any uh, grout work before, it's the same exact thing. Uh, you're just going to just get it on there and kind of rub it in, make sure all the uh, little cracks fill in, and, uh, and then you're going to use your sponge and you're going to wipe it off as clean as you can. Now I waited three days so that way the grout was completely dry. And now I'm gonna be adding a sealer to this. And I'm just gonna spray it on and you're gonna see that the, the grout and the stone will absorb it. Uh, and you keep putting coats of this on until you notice that it's just running off and it's not being absorbed anymore. Then you know that it's completely in there and you let it dry. You let it dry for a few days and, and you're good to go. This is going to be the last brick oven uh, project for a while. The brick oven is actually finished, it's just the rest of the kitchen that needs to be done. So uh, we're probably going to start that sometime in the spring or the early summer of next year. Uh, in the meantime, there's going to be a whole lot of other projects coming. Uh, if you haven't checked out my channel, please check it out. Uh, if you like it, please uh, think about subscribing. And to everybody out there, thank you again for watching and I hope everybody is healthy and safe and I will see you in the next one.